Good morning, Rocketeers. Um, this is, I think, day four, day five. Um, I'm losing track of our read alouds together. Um, today we're going to be um, reading a book and I'm going to challenge you to think about something. I know that um, my Pioneers and Cardinals, we read like the first uh, six pages or so of this book, but the Banana Slugs and the um, Bulldogs did not get a chance to read this book. So I am gonna start from the beginning since I'm doing both classes. Um, so please listen up, even if you've already heard the beginning of the story, uh, just follow along with me. Um, let's get started, I'm gonna try to make it bigger. Okay, great. All right, so this text is called Maps and Globes. Let me see if I can make myself a little bigger. All right, great. Um, Maps and Globes, and it's written by uh, Jack Knowlton and Harriet Barton. Um, and I really want you to think about the title of this text here. Um, I know that I mentioned it when we read the book about Brazil, and it's when you're trying to come up with the genre of the book, it's really important that you pay attention to the title of the book. Um, and I see that the title of this text is Maps and Globes. Maps and Globes, right? Um, and so thinking about that, I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna make a prediction. What kind of text do we think a book titled Maps and Globes would be? Hmm, take a second, think about it. If you said nonfiction, then you would be correct. Um, I know that Maps and Globes is a nonfiction text because part of me is thinking, you know, Maps and Globes, those are real things. And this book is probably going to give me information about it. And I know an informational text is normally nonfiction. Um, another way I can tell um, is I start thinking about my text features. So before we actually start reading, we will sing our nonfiction text features song. So go ahead and start singing with me. Ready? Nonfiction, nonfiction. Nonfiction text features. Nonfiction, nonfiction, nonfiction text features. First, table of contents. Where to find the information? First, table of contents. Where to find the information? Second, photograph. What it looks like. Second, photograph. What it looks like. Third, captions. Explains the pictures. Third, captions. Explains the pictures. Fourth, labels, parts of the pictures. Fourth, labels, parts of the pictures. Fifth, glossary defines the words. Fifth, glossary defines the words. Nonfiction, nonfiction, nonfiction text features. Nonfiction, nonfiction, nonfiction text features. So this book is a little bit tricky because I know that we know there's some there's certain things that we look at when we look at a book and we figure out its genre. We already know it's nonfiction. Um, but if I'm looking at this book, I'm looking for the title. And then I start looking at the pictures and I might say, oh, wait, you know, Miss Polini and Mrs. Myers have told me to look at for real pictures when I see a nonfiction book. Um, and so, uh, Rocketeers, it's really important that you understand that not all um, nonfiction books use real pictures, most of them do, a lot of them do, but there's some that use kind of drawings like this here. Um, let me scroll down. I'm gonna take a little bit of a um, look through these first two pages. So see here, yeah, I don't see a table of contents, but again, not all nonfiction books are the same. Some of them are going to have all of the text features that we sing about in our song, and some of them are not. Um, but those are just some good indicators to figure out, is it a nonfiction or is it not? I do see some text features in this book that do tell me it's a nonfiction book though, and those are the important ones to look at. Um, just looking at this page right here, I'm seeing two text features. <gasps> Rocketeers, take one second. Think in your brain, what two text features do you see on this page? Hmm. All right. I know you have it in your brain. I see a picture and I see a caption. I see a caption, right? So this caption is going to explain what's in the picture, All right? The very first, first maps were just scratches in dirt or sand. Thousands of years ago, our ancestors invented the map. Ancient maps were crude, but very useful tools. 
They helped people find food, clean water, and the way back home, even when home was a deep, dark cave. Ooh, I'm seeing more pictures and captions. Babylonian clay tablet. Chinese silk map. Very cool. Oh, again, picture and caption. Ancient city map drawn in clay. I'm noticing here a, another nonfiction um, text feature, and that is a heading. That is a heading, right? Headings are really important because they're going to tell us what the section is all about, what the section is all about, all right? As civilizations grew, better maps were needed. I'm gonna keep that in my brain while I read this section and then come back to it and think, hmm, was that what the whole section here was about? Why is that so important that there's headings in my book? The oldest existing maps are from the ancient desert kingdoms of Babylonia. These maps were etched on tablets of damp clay that soon baked rock hard in the midday sun. Early Chinese map makers painted beautiful maps of their empire on pure silk cloth. People in every part of the world cleverly used local materials to make the maps that they wanted and needed. That they wanted and needed. Hmm. Oops. Great. Let me keep going. All right, Ooh, here's another picture. Charts are maps used to sail the wide oceans. I see another heading. The Polynesian Islanders sailed the vast Pacific Ocean using <clears throat> stick chart maps. These charts were woven with reeds and palm leaves that showed the ocean's currents and wave directions. Seashells were attached to each chart to indicate the larger islands. So if I go back to this heading here, <clears throat> I notice that everything I just read here um, was the, the heading explained everything I was just about to read about. Um, and it's talking about charts being maps that are used to sail the ocean. So now I know that charts are basically maps of the ocean. Very cool. But ancient world maps were incredibly incomplete. Until a few centuries ago, the earth was neither fully explored nor accurately mapped. As a result, these maps presented a world that looked like this, an incomplete and very incorrect world. Rocketeers, I want you to take a second and look at this picture. Does this look like the maps that we've been looking at? Does this look like the map from our seven continent video? Say no, no, no. I don't think so. It's very, very different. So if I, but if I go here and I look at this heading, that's what it's basically telling me about. It says ancient world maps were incredibly incomplete. Hmm. At this time, most people still believed that the earth was flat as a pancake. If it really was flat, then ships and sailors might tumble over the edge if they sailed too far from dry land. <laughs> The age of exploration begins. Columbus sails. About 500 years ago, some big changes were in the wind. Brave sailors and map makers were beginning to sail farther and farther from safe shores of Europe. The true shape, the true look of the earth was about to be discovered. Realistic, dependable maps would soon follow. Again, I'm noticing here, the age of exploration begins. That is the title of this section. And this whole section is about how um, really awesome map makers and brave sailors, how they went out and explored. And that's how we got the maps that we have now. Very cool stuff. When Christopher Columbus sailed west in 1492, he was actually looking for the spice lands of India. He wanted to discover a safe, short ocean route from Spain to India and back again. What he really found proved to be two unmapped continents, North and South America. Magellan's wrote, uh, route on a modern map. So here we see a caption 
and a picture. And it says here a modern map. So this is what we're used to seeing here. Magellan sails and proves that the earth is round. In 1519, Ferdinand Magellan sailed from Spain with a fleet of five ships. Magellan wanted to be the first explorer to sail all the way around the world. If the voyage was successful, it would prove to one and all that the earth was round, that the fleet sailed down through the icy waters at the tip of, the South America, of South America. Across the Pacific and Indian Oceans, around Africa's Cape of Good Hope, and back to Spain. After three long years at sea, one battered surviving ship had completely encircled the earth. An explosion of discovery and exploration was soon underway now that all were convinced that the earth was round, like an orange, like a cannonball, like a globe. Rocketeers, this is a really good stopping point in this story. Um, so I think I'm going to stop here and we're going to pick up on this book tomorrow. But just going back, I really want you to think about why are headings important and how do they help us better understand nonfiction texts? Why are headings important and how do they help us better understand nonfiction texts? All right, Rocketeers, I'll catch up with you tomorrow. I'll be making some more phone calls today, so make sure your parents pick up their phones so that I can talk with you. Great, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Stop.